Hey guys, Zazie Bark here, and I'm here today to do a video that, uh, with a subject that I haven't talked about in quite a long time, and that would be video games. I don't do a lot of videos about games anymore. Uh, there was a, uh, there was a time when my channel was basically entirely centered around video games, uh, whether it be Warcraft, Uncharted, uh, Call of Duty, just different things, and, um, the Zazzy Bar channel was nearly entirely about doing music videos and just, um, opinionated videos. Uh, I did a lot of resistance and kills on stuff too. Um, I've kind of moved the channel very far away from that. I've mainly focused on film and comic books and other such things and uh, doing reviews with other people and such. Um, <clears throat> so the channel has gone through a major evolution away from video games. But my roots and my my pop culture awareness, I guess, is still very much so rooted in um, my video game past in round 08, 09, even 2010. And, um... We're going to kind of take a trip back to the past today with uh, this video, and I'm going to be doing a video about Dead Space. Um, Dead Space is a huge landmark in my gaming life because it is the first game I ever got on PS3. Um, and really, it's almost, it wasn't, but it, in my mind it was almost like the first video game, like the first real video game I ever played. It was the first End for Mature game I ever got. Um, it was just a really big, important part of my life. And, um, just, you know, entertainment-wise. And, um, it scared the crap out of me, because, uh, you know, I was, I guess I must have been, uh, 14 years old. And, <coughs> and this game was just, uh, really something new, something I hadn't quite played before. Um, it was very, uh, very, um, very disturbing in nature, and, uh, you know, very, uh, just, uh, you know, very adult in its themes and such, and just a very different kind of game. So, it really, it really had an impact on me. Uh, and today, since we're, uh, Dead Space 3 is coming out in, I think, roughly a month, maybe even less than that. Um, so that, Dead Space 3 is coming out soon, and, um, from what the ads are, are, uh, presenting, it almost seems like it's gonna be the end, which I doubt. I mean, look at what happened with Halo. Halo 3, finish the fight! Halo 4, the fight keeps on going. Um, not to criticize Halo, I haven't played it, but uh, just to make fun of that. And uh, Dead Space 3 seems to be taking that tack as well. Instead of finish the fight, it's take down the terror. Uh, which is, you know, it's a good tagline, but I'm very, very skeptical of this being the end. Um, that being said, um, I want to kind of talk about Dead Space, Dead Space 2, and my overall expectations for Dead Space 3, since I am an avid, avid Dead Space fan. Um... So I just want to kind of, I wanted to kind of uh, talk about Dead Space, um, how, I, how I feel about the franchise as a whole, uh, how I felt about it when it started, and how I feel about it now that it's kind of become its own franchise. And, um, you know, when Dead Space first came out, it was really, it was marketed quite a bit, and it was by no means like a, it, it wasn't really, um, it was by no means an indie game. It was made by people who were very, very, um, popular and uh, well-known in the gaming market. You had Visceral Games and you had EA. They, of course, got bigger because of Dead Space because they didn't have a franchise like Dead Space because, you know, uh, Capcom, had, Cap, Capcom, excuse me, had Resident Evil um, and uh, what is that company's name? And um, whoever owns Left 4 Dead had Left 4 Dead. Um, everyone had their own horror franchise, but EA didn't really have that. Uh, I think they're the ones who produced House of the Dead. No, I don't know. But uh, they, they didn't really have a franchise quite like Resident Evil or uh, Left 4 Dead or any of those franchises, so they came up with Dead Space. And Dead Space was this weird kind of thing where, like, it, it was marketed quite a bit again, but it wasn't like, that's the next big game. Uh, I think it kind of got... There, were, there was other stuff coming out that year. It was a very big year for games. And um, it was just... Uh, it wasn't, it was, again, it wasn't, it was kind of a sleeper hit, uh, to, to put it into terms with movies and such. Uh, no, everyone knew about it, but they weren't quite sure about it. And then when they bought it, they were like, wow, this is probably the, one of the best games of the year. And, uh, it really kind of showed people, um, that games don't have to just be, um, first person shooters or remakes anymore, or sequels. Uh, they can be fresh, they can be original, they can be kind of, kind of, risque and that's what Dead Space was. It was kind of like this risque thing that no one was sure about but um, everyone wanted to at least try and everyone tried it and most people loved it so that's why it became kind of one of the biggest games of that year and it was probably only next to Resistance 2 the biggest game of the year for me personally. Uh, Resistance 2 was fantastic too though and that, that came out only a month later 
and uh, it didn't overshadow Dead Space, but it definitely um, it definitely gave it some competition for Game of the Year. I mean, other games that came out that year, you had Gears of War 2, Fable 2, um, not Assassin's Creed 2. Assassin's Creed 2 came out the year, the year a year later, but uh, it was a big year for games, and uh, it quite definitely had competition behind it. Um, so, yeah, and um, it really it became this sleeper hit, and kind of became a phenomenon, at least for people in my generation. People in my generation raved about Dead Space. Um, that was the that was the game you had to have because it was so weird and so scary, um, and there was there wasn't really anything else like it that didn't that wasn't a Resident Evil game. And Resident Evil games were kind of going through this period where all that existed was Resident Evil Four, and everything else was kind of not played. Um, and I didn't even play Resident Evil Four until quite a while after I played Dead Space, and um, I was not very impressed. Oh, and Resident Evil Five came out that year too, so. Um, yeah, it was a little weird. It was a weird uh, year for her survival horror games, and um, so yeah, and uh, th you know, uh, Resident. The thing with Dead Space though was that it was such an original idea to do um, Resident Evil meets Alien meets John Carpenter's The Thing, and it was such an amalgam of different ideas and different popular notions that it very quickly became its own thing. And that's the thing I love about Dead Space. It's such it's a mix of so many different things that it therefore becomes its own thing. I mean, if you look at Dead Space and you're familiar with horror films and horror games, it's very easy to point out the inception of a lot of its ideas. Uh, you know, the necromorphs are not dissimilar to John Carpenter's The Thing. The over-the-shoulder third-person combat is not dissimilar to Resident Evil, though it does work better. <laughs> um, now, I haven't played Resident Evil 6, but from what I've heard, uh, it's kind of a revolution for Resident Evil games. But the Resident Evil games up to that point, including 5, that came out a few months after Dead Space, had this very particular way of doing third-person combat. It was, you aim the gun with a laser sight and you can't move. Um, and Dead Space also used the laser sight gimmick, but it, it kind of played with it. You could also move. There was melee combat. And it was just overall, it took what Resident Evil was doing and then evolved it. It made it better, in my opinion. I don't, I, I like, re, de, de, uh, excuse me, tongue-tied today. Um, but uh, just, just um, I hope this doesn't piss off anyone, but I like Dead Space a lot better than Resident Evil. I think it's got a lot more going for it. But, uh, and de the original Dead Space as compared to Resident Evil 5 is kind of the crux of my point. Because uh, Dead Space was... Because, again, Dead Space took what Resident Evil did with its third-person combat and then was like, yeah, but you can move when you do this. You can run. Um, and also, it also took all the popular notions of uh, horror games like the health bar and the inventory and uh, the objective meter. Um, or just the, they were not even really even horror games, just games in general. And then did its own thing with them. I think the most um, iconic thing is the rig, which is the health bar on Isaac's back. Uh, Isaac being the protagonist of the game. Um, Isaac Clark, engineer, <laughs> um, and he, he had a rig on his back that me measured a health bar, and you could upgrade that, which I thought was a brilliant idea. It looked really fucking cool too. So, um, and nothing really came along and stole that, but it was kind of game developers kind of stopped and stared at it like that's really cool, and gamers did too, and they noticed it and was like, wow, that's really cool. I wish we could steal that, but nothing really did that I can think of. If you guys can think of anything that contradicts my point, go ahead and put it in the comments. But nothing was like Dead Space where it came along and so integrated its gamer into, or its player, into its environment. And uh, that was the big staple of it. Everything was in-game. Um, there were no cutscenes, really. Um, I think there's only... There's really only three cutscenes in the game, and they're still you can still interact with them. You have limited control, but you still have control. Um, no, there's only, only one where you don't have any control, and that's just when uh, Isaac gets thrown out of a fucking ship. And obviously, why would you want to have control over that? He's just getting thrown out of a ship. But then you just get back up, and then you can control him again. Um, but yeah, the cutscenes, the tellings of the story, are in-game. It's Isaac looking at a video screen, and it's really well done and really creepy. It adds a lot to the atmosphere. And, uh... You know, you've also got stuff like uh, ammo is displayed in a little thing above the gun, like a little holographic uh, image. It says how much ammo you have left. Um, uh, everything is done in-game. The objective is, you know, finding your objective is not done through a map screen, though there is a map screen. And again, it's also in-game, but I'll get to that in a sec. Um, the objective is done in a creative way, but kind of a disorienting way, uh, where you click the... I think it's R3. You click R3. I'm a PS3 gamer, so you click R3 on the PS3, and um, it you 
put your hand down and it displays a blue line showing you how to get to your objective. Um, now, I, I love that because, again, it keeps you in game and it's also really easy to access. So if you're like, oh, you kind of get turned around, um, you can just click it and it'll show you where to go, which I love. Um, but it also, the camera swings around to whatever direction you have to go in. So if you're in the middle of a fight and you're trying to see how far away you are from your objective just really quick, you, you're basically just, it's, it's, a, it's a dead death um, in that you're just going to inevitably die. Um, because the, it just, it's, it's, it's a little awkward. It takes a minute for the animation to go. So, um, again, it's got its pros and cons. I, li I like it more than I don't like it. So I, it's, not, it's not something I hope that the, the franchise would abandon. But um, it was just this really interesting thing. And that really is what made Dead Space so unique as a game. Was the amount of player interaction it gave you with its world. Um, the atmosphere in Dead Space is probably... Probably, though it does have great competition, it's probably got the best atmosphere of any game I've ever played. And it did this through a variety of reasons. The first one, and the most prominent one, gameplay-wise, is probably what I just mentioned, the uh, integration of uh, typical gaming uh, ideas into the actual game. Like, you know, the health bar and such. It's actually part of the actual... Um, Environment like usually with a game, the uh, the heads up display, as it's called, of the of the health and your energy or whatever is usually an ammo, is done on a only the gamer can see this kind of thing. Like uh, um, a good example would be Call of Duty, you know, where you've got everything's displayed for the gamers um, for the gamers benefit, not the not the character in game. Which is fine. I'm not criticizing that, but it works better for Dead Space because it's about atmosphere and, and uh, getting you into this world. And I think that was what made Dead Space so unique and so, and just so overall really entertaining to play and made it was like, I want to play Dead Space in particular, not just a survival horror game. Um, what also helped in creating this atmosphere was just the clear devotion and love that the, the, the developers had for horror games and just uh, this universe they were creating. And it was just, it came it just came out through the game all the noises the design of uh, the the USG Ishimura uh, which is the ship that the game takes place on um, the world itself the characters the the voice acting just everything just comes together to form this world this environment that is so scary and so it sucks you in just like the marker itself does it sucks you into this world of madness and nearly spits you out just as mad as it is. But you persevere, or at least you think you do. And that's what keeps you going. Um, it's just this really enjoyable world to experience. And it's a weird kind of thing to enjoy because it drives you insane. But you just can't get away from it. You can't just stop playing. Um, one complaint or just observation I heard a lot of people have with this game. Um, just friends of mine and uh, online reviewers were saying that it was too intense that the game was so intense so scary so difficult to survive that people were, rep were repulsed by it that they just, they just didn't want to play it but and I, I that happened to people who, people I know pe per people I personally know who played the game were like it's so intense I don't want to play it because I just don't want to you know I just don't want to experience it. That's how scary it was. But they always said that something keeps bringing me back. I can only play it for like 15 minutes at a time, but I constantly go back to playing it for those 15 minutes. And, you know, yeah, it was. it's very much so a game you have to play in segments because of how hard it is and how scary it is. Because if you just keep going, I think you're going to get burned out. Um, and uh, it's def that's definitely fair, something I definitely experienced. But um, at the same time... I don't know if that's a problem as much as just a factor of how intense the game is and um, how addicting it is. Because you, you only play it in those 15 minute segments, but you always go back. Like you'll take a half hour break, go out, get something, come back and be like, I want to play Dead Space again. Because it's it's a game that very much will leave something with you. Um, so it's just a, it's a really interesting experience and it was a, it was a really interesting phenomenon to experience um, back when it first came out. Um, so, yeah, the atmosphere is probably the best of any game I've played. I feel like I'm not doing it enough justice just talking about it like this. Um, it's such a rich world. Um, 
it's just because I talked about it being an amalgam of things earlier, and uh, it definitely is. But it's also got its only own unique setting, and not in that I've never seen anything like this before. That's the beauty of it. I've seen things like this before, and it's familiar, but they're so mixed up and just um, played with that it does become its own thing. The world, the world of Dead Space, is not necessarily something we've never seen before. Um, H.R. Geiger's, you know, not H.R. Geiger, excuse me. Um, did I say that earlier? Did I say H.R. Geiger's alien? I meant really Scott's alien and the alien universe in general. Uh, Dead Space has a clear stake in that. Um, there's, a, there's quite a bit of Halo in it, uh, visual-wise, with the armor. Um, and I, th I thought a little bit of Iron Man, too, which this came out the same year as Iron Man, which is which is a little funny. Um, uh, the Iron Man movie, I mean. Um, so there's a little bit of Halo and Iron Man in there, but again, there's also a lot of John Carpenter's thing in terms of the creature designs, just the fact that they're all these gross um, body parts. Um, and they're just an amalgam of that, and they show how scary it is. There's, there's intestines that become arms, and just uh, tails made out of spinal cords. It's uh, yeah, it's it's scary, and it's um, it's it's its own thing. And I've never seen anything quite that looks like this. I mean, John Carpenter's thing was a bunch of body parts, but it didn't quite look like this. The necromorphs are something else. Um, which I also really like the name Necromorphs because it's clearly kind of a reference to Xenomorph, which is the name of the aliens in uh, you know the Alien franchise. That's their scientific name. Um, Xeno being, uh, I think Xeno means alien, uh, and then Morph being uh, transforming you know creature, um, like a like a moth or a butterfly. And uh, you know the Xenomorph started to start out. It's a life cycle. Um, so in order to have heritage, that the Necromorphs have to. Necro means dead, and then morph would have to mean they go through a life cycle. It's different than the way the aliens do. Um, necro, they're of course made of dead, dead tissue, um, and they're given a spark by this thing called the marker, which is a supernatural force, which I find fascinating. Um, and morph, of course, the life cycle is more of, um, uh, the life cycle is a little weird though, because it's like. I guess it's they start out as living, and then they have to die, and then those corpses are therefore meaningless, and then all that happens is they're dead, and then parts of those corpses get made up into these necromorphs. Um, so, and, and it's not always like every necromorph is made up of more than one corpse. Like there's this scene in Dead Space Two where a guy gets turned into a necromorph in front of Isaac, and it's an awesome, gory scene. Just where the guy's face explodes and it's just, it's creepy and awesome, um, but uh, it's 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 definitely got its own thematic view behind it in terms of religion and such, because um, uh, there's there's a lot of religious uh, allegory, not necessarily allegory. There's a lot of religious themes in, in Dead Space, and uh, it's another thing that makes the universe so engaging is how it uh, it views religion and um, just the themes behind it in terms of religious uh, dedication. Um, and the fact that it questions, it questions how, um, dedicated people are to religion, the fact that some people, uh, put religion above life, and, uh, you know, being, being, a, being, being a player who is, is seeing this world through the eyes of someone who's simply trying to survive, it's very clear where the game comes down on that. But it is a really interesting idea, and one that is, uh, Played with and examined quite strongly for a game. Um, actually, it, it does it amazingly, amazingly well for a game, which its primary focus at first is to just scare the hell out of its audience and uh, give them a, give them a really engaging experience. But it goes beyond that. It, it's it's a thought provoking game um, for sure. Um, one of the best in that in that regard. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, just the atmosphere is just so engaging. The world is so interesting. Um, the world itself is, um, in terms of, we talked about the xenomorphs. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the technology behind the world. Um, you know, just the way the world looks technologically, how farly advanced the, the civilization is that we're seeing. And this is, of course, an earthly civilization. There's no alien species beyond the xenomorphs in the in the game, like in terms of Mass Effect. But you know, Earth seems earthly humans seem to be colonizing like they were in the alien universe with aliens. Um, and uh, in terms of technology, it is an extremely advanced civilization, a civilization that seems to have found a deeper connection between technology and humans. That's demonstrated with the rig and the idea of stasis, which, uh, not stasis, uh, kinetic energy, which is um, 
or telekin- I don't know, is, is, is it called telekinesis? It's, it's called something, it's, I don't think it's telekinesis though, where it's- oh, it's just called kinesis, and you just shoot out a beam of light and you can grab stuff with, the, with your hand, it's almost kind of like the force, but it's, it, there's a technological reason behind it. Um, but I think the rig is the best example of how a technological, you know, piece of technology can demonstrate um, health in such an exact, quick way. Um, I mean, we have stuff like it now, like, um, you know, heart monitors and all that, but uh, it's, it's, it's still something different. And the fact that it goes right into your spine is definitely something we haven't seen before. And then again, it, it seems it seems plausible in a futuristic society, and it's and it's 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 its own unique look. Um, uh, another example is the fact that everything is all touch screen or no no screen needed at all. It's like it's like the Iron Man films in the Avengers universe, where everything is kind of like a virtual reality, like iPad without the pad, so to speak. Um, so it's just holographic projections that you can touch and play with, um, like that scene in Iron Man Two where Tony Stark is playing around with um the holograms of uh, um, the Stark Expo and uh, he turns it into the molecules of the new of the new element that becomes the new um, arc reactor and uh, it very much reminds me of that and uh, everything is everything is played with, with in that regard um, with the store the store itself has a, uh, has an actual screen uh, the store being the place where you buy all your armor all your weapons and all that um, and you can, it has a screen, but everything else is almost just like a holographic projection that you can play with. And it's a very engaging way to set up a game universe, and it works well for a game where you have to interact with stuff like that. And it just works really well, and just gives it a flow of a new, it, it's just a, a different kind of flow that other games have. Um, and it's definitely unique to Dead Space, and something that, uh, again, helps in setting up an atmosphere and uh, giving it its own unique feel and style. Um... I love the look of Isaac's armor, and there are there's a bunch of different armors that uh, he wears throughout the game. But uh, you know the main, I guess classic armor, I guess we'll call it. You know the one with the uh, the three rings. Uh, you know the one I'm showing right now uh, for the for the actual thumbnail in this video. Um, that is so cool looking, and I want a figure. Oh, actually, I have a figure of the. Uh, Dead Space 2 armor, which is also really cool, but I like the original armor a little bit better. It's just classic looking and such. Um, but there are like at least nine different armors he wears in the first game alone. Uh, I know we haven't gotten to Dead Space 2 yet, but we'll get to that in a sec. Um, but just in the, uh, in the original Dead Space alone, it's he wears at least nine different armors, and they all look... They mostly all look cool. Some of them look a little ridiculous, like... Um, I don't like the look of... Uh, I think it's the third armor? I don't really like the look of the third armor. It just kind of bugs me, um, just with the face. It looks weird. Um, the security armor is a little strange looking again. It's uh, white and black with this almost like, uh, with these two eyes. Uh, almost, it almost looks like a weird Iron Man armor. And um, I just, it doesn't look like a Dead Space armor. I like Dead Space armor that's got like a blue faceplate. Um, so that one always kind of bugged me, but uh, and didn't really look like it belonged in the same universe as the mining armor, um, which I guess it makes sense that mining armor would look different from like a sold from military grade armor, but still, it just doesn't look like it's part of the same universe. Um, and uh, then we get to Dead Space Two. Um, well, just to wrap up Dead Space One, the story in the original Dead Space is uh, really, really interesting and really well uh, well told, and uh, it's a simple story. It's not it's nothing that's over, overly complicated for the most part. Um, there's a lot of very complex twists and turns in it, but just by a premise standpoint, it's something you can say in, in, in like uh, five sentences. Um, mining crew, no, a, a repair crew goes to a mining ship that's been, um, no communications come out. It's a classic horror setup, and um, there are these creatures on board that have overtaken the ship, and they have to stop it and uh, set, set everything right. They have to stop the chaos and uh, escape alive. Uh, it's a very basic car set setup, but it's the twists and turns that make it unique and make it its own thing and keep you engaged. Um, there's so many plot twists in Dead Space and it all keeps you wanting more. Um, that's always the feeling I get when I switch Dead Space off. It's, I want more. I want to know more about this world. And um, not necessarily like, I want to run to my local comic shop and buy all the Dead Space comics that tie into this because a lot of them suck, but uh, it's just like I want to know where the next uh, plot point is going to come up. Who is this character? How does he relate to the marker? How does he relate to what's going on? Um, 
And that, that establishing um, premise in Dead Space where Isaac and you don't know quite what's going on with all this. You don't know what a necromorph is. You don't know what the marker is. But you find out. And you find out how all these different doctors and uh, military people are connected to it. Um, and by the end, you know mostly everything about it, um, though there are still some mysteries that we still don't know even with Dead Space 2, and maybe we'll find out with Dead Space 3. Um, and, uh, you know, you just want to know more. Um, so, uh, hmm. So, yeah, it's just a really engaging plot. The ending is fucking epic. You fight this giant-ass monster, um, and, uh... It's just, it's just epic. Um, now, I hope I'm remembering it correctly, because I haven't played Dead Space 2 in a long time. I've actually played the original Dead Space a lot more. Um, but it is an epic ass... Oh, yeah, it's not. Okay, Dead Space Dead Space 2 is a weird ending. Um, but that's the original Dead Space, it's, of course, kind of a classic giant monster fight with a giant-ass uh, necro necromorph creature. Um, and it's a really... It's a great climax, and... Uh, you know, it's just overall a really great game, and leaves, and leaves bait for a sequel. Um... But nothing that's sort of like, oh, I know exactly what the sequel's gonna be about. Because the, see, when the sequel finally came along, people were like, that's what it's about? Um, the original left room for... It, it ends on a cliffhanger, but you don't know where that cliffhanger's gonna go at all. Um, which, uh, since this video is mainly just about me uh, giving my expectations for Dead Space 3, I think spoilers are inevitable. So, if you don't want to know the ending of Dead Space and Dead Space 2, don't watch this video. Um... But uh, the original Dead Space ends with Isaac escaping from the Ishimura and uh, his girlfriend Nicole, who that's another big plot thread throughout the entire um, game, is he's looking for his girlfriend Nicole, and we find out that she's dead, though there's a section of the game where Isaac teams up with her to, uh, to help him uh, get off the ship. Now, I, I, I bet you're going, what does that mean? I thought she was dead. She is dead. She's a figment of Isaac's imagination. Um... And there's all these different plot twists and turns, and it's all really well done. Um, you know, it's just a really engaging plot. And in a survival horror game where there's no multiplayer and no co-op and just none of this, you know, it's not a very action-oriented game, a really engaging plot is entirely necessary, and Dead Space nails it. Um, so Dead Space is a 5 out of 5 game, just overall phenomenal. If you haven't played it, but you're interested, definitely check it out. You can get it for dirt cheap, and it's more than worth the price of admission. Um, go check it out, and uh, the replay value is very high on it. Um, it's just a really great experience. One of the best games of the, one of the, best games of the past 15 years for me. Um, so yeah. Um, now we're going to go on to Dead Space 2. Um, Dead Space 2... I was extremely excited about when I first heard about it. It was just like, oh my god, Dead Space 2. It's going to be awesome, because Dead Space 1 was awesome. And it was pretty awesome when I finally played it. Um, I played it in the app on a rainy afternoon, right after a midterm, and uh, it, it came at a perfect time. Um, and uh, it, it was really, really, it was a really strong game. Um, I wasn't very disappointed with it, uh, for the most part. Um, just uh, the gameplay is relatively the same with some slight tweaks here. None that I can really name. It's, it's a more fluid experience gameplay-wise. I think really the biggest change is Isaac's melee. Because um, in the original Dead Space, there's a really big problem because Isaac has this really wonky melee attack where he's like swinging his arms 180 degrees and he does this huge ground stomp like he's trying to crush a city like fucking Godzilla. Um, it's just really wonky. It doesn't look right. And, um, you know, it's just it's weird. Um... It just doesn't look quite look right, and uh, Dead Space 2 sought to fix that. They kind of succeed. It still looks a little weird, but it's it's better. Um, they also um, fixed a lot of the uh, zero gravity stuff, um, and I'm trying to remember. It's been so long since I've played Dead Space 2. Um, I'm pretty sure that... Uh, I'm pretty sure that they, the flight that it, I know Dead Space 2 has flight, I'm just trying to remember if Dead Space 1 has flight. I don't think so, because that was one of the biggest, um, I think that was one of the biggest innovations that was in Dead Space 2, is that you could fly now, uh, when you were in a zero gravity environment, and, uh, Dead Space, uh, 1, oh, okay, I gotta, I'm remembering this properly now, another big problem gameplay-wise with Dead Space 1 is the zero gravity stuff, it is fucking nearly impossible to figure out where you're gonna go, because when you're not walking on the walls, you're leaping from one end of the room to the other, and it's really hard to decide when you're gonna, where you're gonna come out, and just a really, um, it doesn't work very well. 
Dead Space 2 fixed that perfectly because now you've got gravity boosters. You've got little jetpacks inside your suit. And it helped things out majorly. There was no more zero gravity jumps. It was all just hovering around and it really fixed the gameplay a lot. Um, and just made it a very, again, a more fluid experience because Dead Space was very frustrating in that you were just trying to get to this one point and you couldn't quite get there because every time Isaac jumped, he'd bounce off a wall. Um, so that was another really big innovation in Dead Space 2 that helped out gameplay-wise. Um, and a lot of the best um, improvements of Dead Space 2 over the original are gameplay tweaks. Um, I think the point where Dead Space, the original Dead Space still overall comes off as a, as a superior experience is in the story and the characters. Um, one of the biggest things about the original Dead Space is that its protagonist, Isaac Clarke, doesn't talk um, at all. He has no lines. Um, and a lot of games are taking up that trope nowadays with their protagonists not really talking. Um, but uh, I think the, I think the, idea, that, uh, the idea behind that is that um, people don't want to... Uh, um, game designers are trying to make it as an immersive experience as possible. Like they want to think the player is actually doing this, so they don't really give their protagonist much of a personality. Um, Dead Space Two kind of throws out at the window, but it's, it doesn't really hurt the game, in my opinion. Um, they give Isaac a lot of lines, um, and the, they give him a voice that doesn't quite—I wouldn't have imagined it—and they give him a look that I wouldn't have imagined, but I, it's, it still all works fine. Um, but yeah, Isaac doesn't talk much in the first at all in the first game, and then Dead Space 2, he talks a lot. Um, I'm not saying that I like that better or worse, it's just it's an observation. Um, but it does give it a different feel. Dead Space 2 feels a lot more story-heavy than Dead, the original Dead Space. The original Dead Space is much more of a, you find things out slowly as you progress through the game. Dead Space 2 is a lot more plot-heavy, there's a lot more character interactions, there's a lot more plot threads. Um, or at least you would think. Um, Dead Space 2 presents itself as being a lot more story heavy than the original, as I just said, with a lot more dialogue, a lot more character interaction, and a lot, a lot just a lot more characters. But it fools you into thinking that, because the game itself does not have a lot of story. Um, it has roughly the story as the original Dead Space, and what drives me crazy is that we learn nothing new about the universe. We learn nothing, really nothing new about the marker. Um, the villain of the game is basically not existent, but it's just kind of the, the marker taking up a manifestation of, of Nicole. Um, and then you fight her in the end, and it's, it's, it's a really hard boss battle, and it's weird. Um, but it's, it's still good. Um, the game is just very disappointing in how far it takes the universe. Like, Dead Space 2, when I was reading about it in Game Informer, uh, basically a year before the game was getting released... They promised a really, really deep exploration of this universe that we couldn't get in the original game because of the setup. Now Isaac is familiar with the Necromorphs, so now he can take his expertise and learn more about them. He can be proactive. He's not proactive at all, and the game itself just kind of repeats what the original did and has him um, in an area that's gone to shit, and you kind of experience it. And it's basically the same premise, just with some new plot twists. And they're not really all that much of... They're not really all that different from what was in the first game. We learn very little new about the Marker, if anything at all. Um, we don't learn much more about the Necromorphs. There are a couple of new Necromorphs they throw in there, but there's nothing... There's no... There's nothing new that we learn that we're like, oh, wow, we needed Dead Space 2. Um... Uh, I, I'm not saying it's. I'm not saying Dead Space 2 is bad. I'm just saying that it's it's disappointing in terms of its story. Um, just nothing new is done with the universe. Um, again, this is nothing new is done with the universe, and it was it's such a big disappointment because of how much promise was given with the Game Informer description that the developers gave us. They were comparing Isaac to Ripley in Aliens, like the, he was going to be the big expert. Um, on the Necromorphs. He really doesn't know much about the Necromorphs that everyone else does. I mean, he the only things he knows is that they're called Necromorphs. And the really the really scary thing is that basically the minute the second the first game ends is where the second game picks up. So there's no gap of time where Isaac is learning more about the Necromorphs and is um, going and doing things that we don't see in the game. Um, basically where the original leaves off is where Isaac picks up in the second game because he goes into stasis. He falls asleep for four years. And then when he wakes up, this other place has gone to shit. 
Now, I think they wake him up because they know that he knows about the Necromorphs, which is a little bit, it's, it's a little bit like uh, Ripley and Aliens. Um, but the difference is that Ripley, Ripley goes through some character stuff in the meantime. I mean, she does know about the alien a lot more than, you know, Isaac knows about the Necromorphs. You know, it feels like she has done more um, to learn more about her predicament than Isaac does to learn about his. Um, it's just, it's very frustrating, and, and it, uh, it, almost, it makes it seem like the story is moving at a slower pace than it needs to. I almost feel like that with how little Dead Space 2 did, we need a Dead Space 4, because Dead Space 3... I really hope that they pick up the story slack that Dead Space 2 left because they have a lot they have to explain in one game and I feel like it's going to need a Dead Space 4 or maybe even a Dead Space 5 because they left a lot to be desired with Dead Space 2's story. Um, so yeah, it's just not really um, not really a story heavy game. There's um, it, Again, it makes you feel like it is because there's a lot more dialogue but the dialogue doesn't do much to advance the story that was already set up in the original. Um, it's also a lot more of a light-hearted game than Dead Space is, and that's something where I was like, this doesn't really feel like Dead Space anymore, and I think the best example of that is there's a scene where, um, Ellie and Isaac are about to, like, tunnel through, the, go through this tunnel, um, and get to some place, and, uh, they're cracking jokes the whole time, and there's this huge accident scene where Dead, where Isaac is, like, taking down necromorphs, like, Master Chief takes down, um... The Covenant in Halo, it just doesn't feel like Dead Space. You're not worrying about ammunition, you're just mowing down enemies, and it doesn't really feel like Dead Space anymore. Um, so, Dead Space 2 feels a lot different. It's it's much more, the, again, there's a lot of gameplay improvements. I like the idea of Isaac talking a lot more, but I want it to be warranted. I, I, don't, I don't just want Isaac to talk because, um, because now, we, now the, the writers are allowing him to. I want him to have more to say. I want him to have more to find out that he would have to engage in dialogue. Not a lot of that is done. There's a little bit done, but not enough. Um, so Dead Space 2 is very disappointing in terms of story, but extremely satisfying in terms of gameplay. Um, it's just too similar to the original. It doesn't move the universe along enough. Um, and it leaves a lot to be desired and a lot that has to be picked up with a... Um, with Dead Space 3, which now we're getting to Dead Space 3. Biggest thing I want from Dead Space 3, give me a, a deeper story. Um, Dead Space is brilliant for its story. Dead Space 2 is lackluster for its story because they both have the same story. Um, again, Dead Space was brilliant for how it took this um, original classic horror setup and then did its own thing with it, and it was really engaging. Dead Space 2 was just as engaging, but it left more because it's a sequel. You want it to be more. You want more of a story. You want the universe to be expanded more. You know, with a sequel, you want to make it bigger. And uh, they didn't really do that at all. They just made the first game again, but with more dialogue and a different setting. Um, and that dialogue in a different setting was definitely worth experiencing, but I wanted more behind it, and we didn't get it. Um, with Dead Space 3, we're again getting a different setting. Now it's going to all be snow, um, which it kind of feels like they're ripping off Uncharted at this point. Like, uh, you know, in terms of like, oh, we went from um, the jungle to... Um, oh, well, not snow, um, the, the first game is like the jungle, the second game is the snow, the third game is the desert. So now it's like ship, um, space station, whole planet. So it's, it's getting bigger, um, in terms of that, but, um, you know, I, I want more out of Dead Space 3. I want a different, I want, I want more of a story. I want an, a more, more deeply involved story. I want Isaac to be more proactive. Um, I know now that he, he finds, in Dead Space 2, he basically finds out that there's more than one marker and that they all serve different purposes and that at the end of Dead Space 2, he destroys one and now his vow is, we're going to destroy all of the markers. So that's what Dead Space 3 is going to be about. And I hope that he's going to be more proactive to do that because in Dead Space 1 and 2, he's just reacting to things. In Dead Space, it worked because he, it was breaking status quo for him. He was a normal engineer going to, find, going to talk to his girlfriend and all of a sudden it turned into this huge ordeal. You know, with Dead Space 2, it's the same thing. But this time, he wakes up after after a similar experience and jumps right into another experience and feels just as thrown in and reactionary. I want Dead Space 3 to be like, Isaac is taking action and not just reaction reacting. Um, so that's what I want from Dead Space 3. Um, so I, I want a more proactive Isaac. I want a, more, a deeper story, not one that's just he ends up in this new place and has to escape. Um, I want him to actually go to a place, um, interact with people that he wants to interact with, and um, be there by his own will. 
Um, so, and also, um, uh, I know Dead Space 3 is going to have co-op, and, um, I think that's a great idea. It's definitely a concept that lends itself really well to co-op, but, uh, I just hope that, um, you know, I hope that it doesn't ruin the atmosphere. Um, that's my only desire. Um, also, give us some better multiplayer than what we had in Dead Space 2, because Dead Space 2 has multiplayer. Um, that's one, that, that's one other thing I forgot to mention, was that Dead Space 2, um, tried to advance the universe again by, um, giving us multiplayer, and, uh, I hope that de it, it was pretty shitty, it was pretty lackluster multiplayer, and it didn't, and again, it didn't really feel like Dead Space. I hope that Dead Space 3 gives us more involved multiplayer with, uh, with, a, with more of a Dead Space feel, because Dead Space 2 felt very tacked on in terms of its multiplayer. Um, so, better multiplayer. I uh, hope the co-op is good. Um, just, uh, overall, I hope that it's a, a superior game to Dead Space 2. More, and just, it really, the only thing it has to improve on is story and uh, fulfill, its, it fulfill its need to give us good co-op and multiplayer in terms of this universe. So, that's really all you need. Nothing much more. Keep the gameplay the same. Um, you know... Dead Space, you know, the old adage, if, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Um, and that's what I think uh, Dead Space 3 needs to stick to. Fix the things that are broken, um, not, and the story isn't broken, it just needs to be more developed. And, uh, and uh, you know, the multiplayer is definitely broken, so fix the multiplayer and give us good co-op. That's really all I need from Dead Space 3. And I just need uh, another another venture into this universe with the same gameplay. Um, so that's what I want from Dead Space 3. I hope it gives it, I hope it, gives it, to, I hope it gives it to me, excuse me. Um, so those are my expectations for Dead Space 3. I don't want to say much more about it until I play it. Um, but I am definitely excited and I have high hopes for the game. Um, so that's kind of my video about Dead Space. Um, I, I know I kind of jumped all over the place in terms of the game. This isn't really a review, just kind of me talking about Dead Space for roughly 40 minutes. So, uh, thank you very much for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed and got something out of it. Um, stay tuned soon for some Godzilla Gang stuff that's coming up and, um, reviews and such. Um, I know uh, we're doing, me, Adam, and Gorzar are recording a new chat tonight, uh, which I don't know what Adam's going to post that. That's going on his channel, um, but it is going to be Godzilla related, and uh, it, it should be pretty pretty fun. Um, and, uh, that, uh, and I think we're also going to discuss um, when we're going to bring back ZGC, um, since we're all going to be together for once. Um, we, haven't, we, we haven't been in a video together in a very long time, so it's gonna, we're going to talk a lot about uh, ZGC and such. Um, so look out for the Godzilla Gang, look out for some more ZGC, and also look out for, uh, if you're missing me on my channel, because I don't post as regularly as I like to, um, I'm on Sid Part 2's channel a lot, I'm Geeky Gentleman, you can go see me there, and I'm there quite a bit, so, um, go check out Geeky Gentleman, I'm very proud of it, um, it's a, it's a fun show, so go check out Geeky Gentleman on Sid Part 2's channel, it's a podcast we do every week, and we do a lot of mini-sodes, um, so go check it out, I think, I think you guys really enjoy it, so, uh, thank you very much for listening, and I'll see you guys soon for some more videos. Farewell.